Recording is rolling. Today is Thursday, May 19. Uh, I've got a, an activity lineup that I've had on, on deck for a while, but I uh, never got around to it. Uh, this uh, circle log analog calculator. I'm going to show you guys how to create a calculator out of, uh, well, this template right here uh, and a paper clip. Uh, you know, another thing that we never quite got around to is a uh, block off bottle rocket. So that's my plan tomorrow is to have an outside day. Uh, so here, let's uh, do this activity. I'll show you guys how you can multiply, divide, and uh, find roots, for example, square roots with just this right here. And then uh, you guys have the rest of the class to uh, work on your paper roller coasters or uh, study or make up anything you need to, right? So what, what's the, let's deal with this. Um, so go ahead and cut out those circles. Uh, let me show you guys the final product. You guys see kind of where this is headed. Ah, do you guys see how that, that spins like that? You guys see that? Ooh, look at there. Ooh, so spinny. And right, so uh, that's what we're going to construct. So I'll cut this out as you guys cut this out so we can do this all together. Okay. And I'll show you guys how to use this thing. Okay. All right, cut this out. I'll uh, you guys a little bit about this. Uh, so this is going to be an analog calculator. That's uh, in contrast to a digital calculator. You guys know these digital calculators like this one right here. Uh, it's just a bunch of ones and zeros and the calculator crunches ones and zeros and then uh, using base two Right, just zeros and ones, right? And then translate that to base 10 and it's got that number on the screen. You're like, okay, right. And that has, uh, so you can, of course, calculate really fast. You can also get a lot of precision. And uh, the past methods of calculating have sort of gone by the wayside. But what are some past methods of calculating? Uh, you guys ever seen an abacus? Okay. Abacus was uh, a way to count. You can actually do math in an abacus too. You can uh, not only add and subtract, you can also multiply and uh, also do a square root to see. Okay, you know, certain techniques. Um, and also, uh, do, do you guys uh, know something called a slide roll? A slide roll? Okay. I think it's played a movie for you guys. Uh, no, did did I play a Apollo 13 for you guys? Uh, or did, did we not get to that? No, okay. We, okay. Yeah, there's there something weird with the schedule. All right. So, sorry about that. Um, if you guys have never seen a movie from the 1990s called Apollo 13, uh, I do recommend it. It's a, um, a well, historical base movie uh, uh, on a particular Apollo mission from 1970. Actually put this movie together. They actually uh, uh, looked at uh, actual uh, call logs between uh, the astronauts and uh, well, the, the base down in uh, Houston, Texas, uh, back in that flight. So yeah, um, pretty, pretty close to the documentary. Uh, but back in 19, let's say it's 1970, right? Uh, does anybody have these nice scientific calculators that fit in their pocket back in 1970? Uh, no. Uh, if they have a calculator at all, it probably takes up a good uh, portion of the room. Right? So you know, definitely not uh, like on deck the, or on board the spaceship. Uh, so how do they do calculations, which they had to do? Well, you can actually uh, see it in the movie is what they use as a slide rule. And actually what we're doing here today is like the same principles as slide rule. It's just a, um, in a circle shape. Uh, but, but I'll show you guys how you can uh, multiply it by real fast and take roots and the whole thing. Okay, so I got both these cut out. Okay, toss some scraps. Uh, okay. Okay. All right, then um, okay, you guys see a small hole right in the middle. Okay, so I'm going to punch through right there. That's where I'm going to put the paper clip through so that it can rotate about something. An axle. Right, right in the middle. Bam. Right here. Bam. Oh, uh, look at there. Got a little punch in the middle. Uh, then take a paper clip, push that through. And uh, spring the model. Then you can spin like this. Right now, while you guys are getting up to that step, uh, I got a little bit more about how it's constructed. So you see some numbers around the uh, to conference of the, the circle, uh, it's numbered one through nine, and then between the nine and the one, well, it goes like it's 9.5. So if you go to like 9.999, right, and then it rolls back to one. Notice there's no zero on here, and there's also no 10, right? So it's one through nine, and then the numbers between nine, 10, right? It goes, right? Okay, so that's interesting. Uh, and, um, but the, these numbers are not spaced evenly, right? Not, not evenly, literally. And now they're, they're spaced the same with each other. So like you took one circle and blew it up and I can prove that to you guys just very quick. So you could, if you line up the one with the one, 
then the two lines up with the two, and the three with the three, and so on all the way around with the seven with the seven, right? So, okay, so they can line up the same, but what is, what is that spacing? Right. Oh, I, I should tell you guys, uh, I actually uh, stole this off a, a YouTube video from the channel Mythologer. Uh, there's a YouTube channel called Mythologer, talking about a lot of math stuff. Um, right. And I took a screenshot and printed this out from there. Right. Uh, but the way you say you can actually put this together, uh, it's actually, uh, I thought, pretty fascinating. So if you take a rubber band, right? you guys imagine like a rubber band is stretchy. That's like the point of a rubber band, right? So you have a rubber band and you list out the numbers, uh, say one through nine, right? So, okay, so great, got, got the numbers listed one through nine, right? And then you attach the one right here at this one, right? And then start rotating this wheel, but you keep the other end of the rubber band like uh, fixed in place so it's like tied to long. Uh, and then uh, as you rotate the wheel around, doesn't that stretch the rubber band? So the numbers get more and more stretched out. And that's what's going on here. See how the, uh, uh, like the eight and the nine are really close to each other, right? And then the seven and eight, they're a little more spread out. And the six and seven, a little more spread out. They get more and more spread out. Uh, the gap between two and three, that's pretty big. The gap between two and one, that's huge. That looks like, a, well, it's more than a quarter of the circle. Ooh, that's a big old gap, right? Huh. All right, now, what, what is that useful for, right? And I can line up all the numbers, right? Well, it actually creates a logarithmic scale, right? You guys remember like logarithms and exponents? We've done a little bit in here. Um, it's probably did more than your math class, right? All right, you guys ready to uh, see how to use this thing? All right, so uh, the fact that all the numbers can line up, okay? Now we're gonna, so, so right now, that they're all lined up, the one and the one, the two and the two, and the five and the five, right? But I'm gonna rotate these so that they, uh, they're mismatched. Let me take this inside one and I'm going to line it up with, for example, this two right here. Right, so the outside two and the inside one are lined up. You guys get it? Right. Uh, wouldn't that be like a, now if you treat that as a fraction, like two over one, okay, that could be a two over one ratio, right? And something interesting as you go around, look at the ratios of these other numbers four over two, six over three, uh, eight over four. Huh. Those are all two to one ratios, aren't they? Okay, do you guys see that the ratio is the same regardless of where you are in the circle? It's a two to one ratio everywhere. Well, for this exact uh, position, right? But uh, what about this one? One, five, one over five. Ooh, that's not two to one. But wait a minute. I know it is 0.2. That looks kind of like two. Uh, so there, one thing you do have to do is uh, uh, treat this as a, a, a floating place decimal, right? The, the, the decimal can float. So one might stand for one or one might mean 10. Right, because ten and one are like the same uh, number on this uh, on on this calculator. Okay, so five might be five, or might be fifty, right, or it might be five, you know five hundred. So, so the decimal place is a lot to float. And ten over five, that is two. Uh, what about one point four over seven? Well, it could be fourteen over seven, which would also be two. So, so it still works. I right? guess as long as you float the decimal place. Uh, let's try another one. What if I take this inside one and I line it up with the outside three? So that create so three over one is a fraction. That's a three to one ratio, right? Okay. And look around. Uh, we got uh, six over two. That's three. Nine over three. That's three. One point two over four. Oh well, twelve over four. That's three, right? As long as you flip the decimal, right? you get see you can do that. Huh? Okay. So the ratios are the same, no matter no matter how you spin it, right? Um, it, 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 as long as it's locked in place, the ratios are the same all the way around the circle. Right? Okay. Now what's that good for? Well. If the ratios are the same, let's go back to uh, the first setups I had, like a two to one ratio. Okay. If that's a two to one ratio, two to one ratio, I can write that down as a fraction, right? Two over one, right? Share as a principle how this works. Okay. I can pick any other uh, place and that would also be the same ratio. Uh, what if I wanna know, um, or here, here I'll, I'll do one that's like definitely true, like six over three, right? So that ratio is the same, right? Hey, do you, do you guys remember uh, cross multiplication? Like, could I take this three and cross multiply it up here and get an equation that looks like two times three is equal to six, right? Okay, so you see how you could uh, either divide or multiply, right? And, and I'm just using an example that's like really obvious, right? Uh, and uh, if you take this inside one, like this one, and you use that as the marker, then the denominator of this fraction will always be one. And so you don't have to like do any special math on that part, right? Because divided by one is just that, it's the top number. Huh. So that could be a convenient thing, right? Oh, I wonder um, what is, hmm. Let's try this. Uh, what if I want to know what is uh, seven divided by 3.5, right? So I have that lined up. 
right? Seven over 3.5, but let's pretend I didn't know what that was. Seven divided by 3.5, right? Like, huh, I wonder what that is, right? So I, I have a lined up there, like I'm gonna divide it. Then uh, now I'm, I'm not rotating the circles with respect to each other. I'm just uh, turn this whole thing, right? So I can read. That's uh, would be a two to one ratio. I do see that. Hmm. Okay. Ah, so it must be uh, must be equal to two, right? So so you can divide like that. Um, let, let me pick something crazy. Let, let's see what comes out of this. I wonder what is. Uh, I'm just gonna make up something off the top of my head. What is 89 divided by 55? I'm just doing something crazy. Okay. Now for order magnitude, I do see that this is somewhere between one and two. Okay. So right. So so I've got that at least order magnitude. Okay. So 89 over 55. So here's here's 5.5. I'm going to treat that as 55. And you'd find 89. Where's that? That'd be like, right. Okay, here's 8.5, 86, 87, 88, 89. That's right. Well, 5 by 1, but 5. It's like right there. Okay, so there is where it's lined up, right there. Bam. Right. right. That is that ratio. Right. Now, all I have to do is, um, Lock, lock the circles in place with respect to each other. Look over here, where's the one pointing at? The one's pointing at a little under 1.6. It's really close to one. Actually, it's really close to 1.6. Okay. I'm gonna, let's see how close that is. Okay. I'm gonna say this is probably pretty close to 1.6. Right. Now the disadvantage with this is that you can't get much more precision than that, but that's probably pretty close. Well, let me see what that is. What is 89 or, oh, of course it's gonna be 1.6. You know what? I just picked numbers off the top of my head, but <laughs> uh, I think those are both Fibonacci numbers, aren't they? Did we just do Fibonacci uh, sequence a few days back? Um, so, so of course it should be pretty close to golden ratio, shouldn't it? Yeah. And okay, so the digital calculator confirms that. What what, what this says anyway? It's pretty, pretty close to that. It's like um, one point six one eight da da da. Okay. All right. Looks good. Okay. Right. You guys good there? And so you can see, like in principle, how you could work your way around this and then multiply or divide like any numbers you want. Right? So I'm gonna show you guys another trick, uh, which is a uh, roots, right? Like square roots, cube roots. Right? Now, uh, one thing that we've done in this class is expressed roots as powers. Like for example, uh, the square root of nine, start with a pretty basic one. Right? That's the same thing as nine to the power of what? One half, yeah, so one half powers, right? And what does that have to do with this, uh, this calculator? Right? Actually, you don't even need both parts of this. You just pick either of the circles. So I'm going to just go back to like the circle. Right? This, all you need is this just to do square roots. All right, show you how. So locate the one and locate the nine, right? Okay. And they go exactly halfway between those. All right. Now it sweeps out most of the circle. Right? So what's halfway between here and here? Sweeping around. Right? Wouldn't that be this point right here? Right? That says three. Look at that. It says three. Ah. Okay, so I picked one that you guys obviously would know the answer for. Okay. But let, let's do another one that you should obviously know the answer for. How about four? Square root of four. Well, that's obviously two. So it's four to the one half. Okay. So halfway around between this four and this one. Let's see. Four and one. Let's see, where's that? It's right here. Oh, that's exactly two. That's two. Yay. Okay. Now let's pick a tricky one and I'll go check, check it with the digital calculator. Uh, I wonder what is the square root of seven? Just something, something kind of crazy. Okay, so here's the seven, here's the one. Let's see, with halfway between those, uh, it might help to. Uh, I, ooh, do I have a, I do have a protractor up here, huh? I guess I've got like exactly the number of degrees. Um, yeah, I'm try to try this little tricky trick here. That's like, try to get as exact as I can. It's about 53 ish degrees. What is 360 minus that angle divided by two? Uh, 153, 154 degrees, somewhere in there. Okay, let me check. What is 150 something degrees from the seven? 150, that's like right here. Two, four, five. That's going to bring me up to. This point about five to the six or seven to eight. Okay. Uh, looks like between 2.6 and 2.7. So I'm going to guess, here, I'm, I'm going to guess 2.67. Okay. Right? And then uh, we'll, we'll see how close that is. So that's seven to the one half power. So it's the method I used. Okay. Uh, well, I'll say equals about. Okay. Let's see what it is exactly. What is the square root of seven? 2.64, some blah, blah, blah. Right. It's actually 2.64. 
five, eight. Okay, that's extremely close. Yeah, you guys see that? Okay, yay. Now you know how to do square root. Hey, what about cube roots? Do you think you do cube roots? Okay. For example, what's the cube root of eight? I think you guys probably know this. What times what times what is eight? Two. Yeah, so it has to be two. Oh, wouldn't that be the same thing as uh, like eight to the one third power though? Okay. And on the circle, on, on this log space circle, that should be a third of the way between this one and this eight. Okay. So what's the third of the way? Um, okay, so it's probably right about here. Oh yeah, that's that's a two, but I, I know the answer ahead of time anyway, so, yeah, so it's two. Uh, let me try something crazy. Uh, I wonder what is the cube root of, um, let's try this number, 55. Cube root of 55. Okay, so that's 55 to the one third power. You say equals about, uh, because I'm using this method. All right, so 55, okay, well, I've got 5.5. .5. Um, so between that and the one, all right, what's the cube root of that? Actually, is this going to get me into trouble? Yeah, I think this is, I, I shouldn't have picked that. Let me do 5.5. Right. I think there's there's other things I'm not going to super detail about. I'm going to say 5.5. Okay, we'll stick with that. Cube root of 5.5. Right. So a third of the way, right? That's probably right about here. I'm going to estimate 1.8. I'm going to say 1.8. Right. Let's see how close this is. Right. What is the what is 5.5 to the power of one third? Right. It's actually well, it's actually 1.7652, da, da, da. Yeah, so again, that's extremely close, right? So there you go. Right, so there's how you can use a, um, say an analog calculator to multiply, divide, take roots. There you go, and that's right there. No batteries needed. All righto. So you guys got a uh, rest of class period to uh, work on your paper roller coasters and, um, Anything else you need to make up for your classes? You need to study for exams. And then uh, tomorrow, the plan is to take you guys outside and we're going to blast off on Bakla rockets. Oh, yeah.